trade in focus. The new North American Free Trade Pact would boost the U.S. economy and auto parts production, but it could limit your choices when it comes to what you drive. This is according to a report from the International Trade Commission. Joining us now, senior fellow at the National Taxpayers Union, Forward Strategies President, Maddie Duppler. Maddie, always a pleasure to see you. Good morning, Dagan. Good morning. So talk to me about this report on the impact of this trade deal. Will we be able to get it passed through Congress and signed into law? So this report confirms exactly what most of us already know, which is that free and fair trade is good for Americans. As you mentioned before, this is something that we'll see an increase in GDP if it can get past 0.35 percentage points. If that doesn't seem like a lot, consider the fact that most of the critics of the Donald Trump administration said that we couldn't even get to 2.5%, much less the 3% we had last year. So a, thir a full third of a percentage point <clears throat> excuse me, is a lot of growth over the course of the next couple of years. Now, the question of whether you get it through Congress is another uh, question entirely. This report released yesterday was a step that was necessary in moving the ball forward on the USMCA. If you recall in 2015, a Republican Congress passed into law the TPA, which is the Fast Track Authority for Trade Agreements, but that sets into motion a couple of different steps. Next, the president still has to submit to Congress the full text of the agreement, and then Congress has 90 days to get that passed through both chambers and ready for his signature. Anthony, do you think that we can get this passed? Nancy Pelosi says she wants the Speaker of the House, says she wants changes to the pact on labor standards. Yeah. And then some Republicans don't like the concessions made to labor and environmental groups. So if I, I, when I see something that neither side mm -hmm. thinks is perfect, then it's a winner. Yeah, so I, you know, I'm just skeptical now about everything in Washington. So, you know, I would have to say that you have to be worried that it can't get passed. It really should get passed. Mm -hmm. And again, there's enough in there for everybody and there's enough not in there for each side, which makes it a very good compromise. And, and, and it will lead to better job growth and it will lead to higher wages for Americans. So I hope it gets passed. But these people are so nuts, Dagan, and they're going after each other so hard. It's, it's sort of like they don't really care about the American people. They just care about how, how they can viciously attack each other. So I'm, I'm, I'm worried about it. Uh, Lindsay, what would be the market reaction to this? Because we talk so much about the negotiations for the China-U.S. trade deal. But this is critical. It's been inked. It's the, it's the broad strokes. But nevertheless, what if this did get through Congress? Does it need to get through Congress in terms of investor sentiment and kind of the market outlook? Yeah, I do think it needs to get through Congress. There is just definitely a sentiment impact that you'd see in the market if this did not get through. The auto industry is a big part of the American economy and it's an important industry to us. Um, my question for Maddie really is uh, where's the disconnect? Because a lot of economists and think tanks really think that this deal doesn't really benefit the U.S and it's just really going to lead to higher cost for cars for Americans and the consumer. Well, I would disagree with that characterization of the USMCA broadly. Uh, as you recall, NAFTA was passed almost 26 years ago now, uh, before the Internet was even really a thing. And now the Internet is in everything in our lives. So this updates a lot of digital tax rules, excuse me, digital trade rules, uh, IP protections. But the automobile rules, of course, are a cause for concern. Dagan mentioned in the beginning that this is something that might restrict options for American consumers because it might increase the cost of buying a car here in the United States. That, of course, needs to be taken against the rest of the deal, which would continue to broaden out uh, the ability of American companies and manufacturers to export to Canada and Mexico, which, of course, are our closest trading partners. And I, and I want to move on, but I didn't understand what the president was trying to do, threatening tariffs on auto imports from Mexico when, again, it's kind of an offshoot of this new trade agreement, but this is a tariff-free zone in terms of auto production, and he's stepping on that, using it as a threat. He is tariff man in his own words, using that as a threat <laughs> against Mexico if they don't stop the, in, the flow of migrants and drugs into the United States. So I don't know where that goes. If he brings it up again, maybe we need to be concerned, but so far he's, he's, he hasn't mentioned it in recent days. Days. I want to move on. Speaking of jobs, new jobs in the Big Apple. Netflix announcing it's set to open a production hub in New York City, which will bring 127 new jobs. It's investing $100 million. The company already produces some shows in New York, like the unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt and Orange is the New Black. Maddie, what is, does this send a signal that New York is open for business? 
Potentially. This comes on the heels, of course, of Amazon pulling out of New York after a lot of progressive backlash against the fact that they were coming into uh, Queens. So we'll see. I don't think that it shows that this is going to be a harbinger for job growth in the, the Big Apple simply because of that fight with Amazon. You see this in cities across the nation. Uh, t uh, California, San Francisco is trying to attack uh, tech IPOs right now. New York, of course, very hostile to new job creators without putting a bunch of strings attached to them coming into these uh, coming into these communities. So it's very difficult for uh, these companies now that would be huge job creators and create some economic growth uh, to come in uh, to some of these cities. And I think New York has demonstrated that that hostility might be a barrier in the future as well. Uh, um, let's stay on the topic of New York City. For the first time in a decade, the population in the city is dipping. New federal estimates show that the city's population is falling by about half a percent in 2017 and 2018. Other major cities also reporting declines. Anthony Scaramucci, this is because, again, what do you get for your tax money that you pay into the city here? You still have potholes. Mm -hmm. Alexander Ocasio-Cortez upset about the asthma that children in the Bronx suffer from. Well, you know what? That's a failure of government, despite it being basically a socialist city. Yeah, but 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 again, when you have a one-party system, you can ask President Xi. The first thing he did when he took power was start an anti-corruption campaign. So. You have a one-party system in New York. You have corruption. You don't know where the money's going. And when you have a one-party system, they can even define the corruption. So it's even worse than everybody thinks. When Mayor Bloomberg was running the city, we had population growth. When Bill de Blasio, Mayor de Blasio, was running the city, we had population decline. Uh, and, it, and again, remember, people should remember that prices and taxes are meaning taxes or a price for services. The taxes are very high mm -hmm. and the delivery of the services are very, very low. So, so there's a disconnect. And people will continue to leave the city until they make some changes. But, but this has, what were you going to say, Ronica? Well, and it's expensive to be here. I mean, people have sensibility. And we live in a world where New York is a wonderful place, but you don't need to be in New York to do work in New York. And, you know, people see how high the taxes are to be here. Maddie, what, I'm about, what about the, the billion dollars that the mayor, the first lady uh, disappeared? Does anybody want to talk about that? It was no? an issue on mental health. It was about, yeah. it was more than half a billion, yeah, for so sure. They, they've misplaced a half a billion dollars, but there's nobody, nobody talking about it because it's a one-party system. Maddie, I'm going to give you final word on this, but again, once corruption develops in a, in a city, it's hard to uncover it, like Anthony said, because there's not a really another party involved to dig at the dirt. Right. I mean, where's the accountability in New York City? To the point we had earlier, when the taxes are high, but people don't see anything for their taxes. Remember Cardi B went on that rant about, where all my, where's all love my her. tax money going? Love her. Uh, I, did, you know, I love Cardi. I love right? Cardi B. Because but I actually, realize this. I was at the gym yesterday talking about her because she had the best explanation of why you need to have lower taxes. Because she said, all my friends, they're making a couple million, but they're supporting their whole family. And then you take 70% of their money, potentially. And she's like, where's that going? She said, you're right. crippling these people wow. who don't have a long, like, a long career. You I thought it made, I was like, why is she running for if office? If you're a New York City taxpayer <laughs> at the highest bracket, you're a minority partner in your own life. Bill de Blasio is your general partner. Okay, wake up and let's get rid of this guy. Maddie, good to see you. Good Come back. You guys. Have a fantastic Happy weekend. Sir. You as well, Maddie Duffler. Pier One, meantime, closing stores. Cheryl Cassoni has the details. Hey, Cheryl. Yeah, the company really in trouble here, Dagan, and the continued.